If you don't know, I'm Trace. I don't know why you wouldn't know if you're here. I thought I would come back and talk to you guys about where I've been. Where the F I've been. So I've been getting all these tweets from you guys about where I've been and people wondering what's going on and hi, welcome to my channel. If you are a new subscriber and this is your first video, thank you so much for subscribing. Quite a few of you joined in the last couple of months and I love you guys for it. If you've been here before and this is your second or fifth or tenth video, hi, I love you guys. Thanks so much for subscribing. So I've pretty much been traveling since my birthday back in May. So the reason to watch this video is essentially a behind the scenes tour of where I've been over the last few weeks. And I'm gonna tell you things you wouldn't see in our professional videos on Discovery. Back in May, we launched a new website called seeker.com. And they asked me, hey Trace, do you have any ideas for like cool stuff? How about we go to the Svalbard Global Seed Vault? That sounds awesome. And let's be clear, it really was. Svalbard is an archipelago near the North Pole. It's about 800 miles away. I was on a plane forever. And in case you're wondering, mostly I just watch movies on my iPad. Also, international flights, drinks are free, so. We had five days to explore this amazing place. And there are things that you won't see in the Svalbard videos that we release on DNews and on Seeker.com that I thought I would tell you about here. Firstly, we didn't see a sunset for a week. The sun doesn't set in Svalbard at this time of year. The town is in this little valley and the sun would just kind of circle around the top of the valley over and over again. It was crazy. We would wake up at nine, we would have a little breakfast, and then we would work all day, just capturing video all over the island that we were on. We went to the top of this mountain, we got this amazing footage of these beautiful satellite dishes, and, and then we would look up and it'd be 4 p.m. and we hadn't eaten anything or stopped working at all because there was no indication by the sun. You couldn't guess what time it was. Also a real mind fuck though, for sure. We got to Svalbard and we were staying at a Radisson. I know that's weird. It's a Radisson at the North Pole, essentially. It's the northernmost hotel in the world. You know why? Because it's at the north end of town. That's it. <laughs> it's also got the northernmost ATM in the world and the northernmost bar in the world. I walked into the bar and the guy who was the bartender, his name is Justin, shout out, he watched D News. He's like, hey, I know you on YouTube. I was like, that's so crazy. Thank you for watching. Then we drank a lot of beer because that's what you do in Svalbard. Svalbard is this like unspoilt wilderness, but without the wilderness feel because there's no trees there. It's just like scrub grass and stuff. We actually had a shot list of things that we wanted to capture while we were there. And one of those was local plants, but there weren't any local plants, which is crazy. We did see a lot of reindeer. Our cameraman, Matt, like got way, way up in there. And then we went back to the bar and we we're like, oh my God, guys, we saw this reindeer. And the guy was like, so they're everywhere. So we couldn't actually leave our encampment site 10 without bringing a high powered rifle with us because it's against the law. You have to be worried about polar bears because they will eat you and kill you, which is crazy. There were people riding around on bicycles all the time just with their gun. They have a saying there, take off your shoes and leave your gun at the door. There was no real law there is almost what it felt like. We went to you know mines that were abandoned. They were just hanging out there. They were just sitting on these mountainsides because Svalbard is mainly a coal mining place. So we would go to these mines and we would climb up this mountain and we would just wander around. And to be honest, I was still worried about polar bears, but that's neither here nor there. And we just take pictures and get video because there's nobody, there's nobody there. There's nobody to stop you. There's no fences, there's no police officers, there's nothing. There are even these giant bucket chains that ran from these mines all the way back to town where they could be loaded on boats and sent elsewhere. And those bucket chains were just collapsing. And they had these big iron gears and giant cables and some of them had snapped and they just left them there. And that's incredible to me. They just abandoned stuff. And we captured the seed vault and we did all of that. Long story short, Svalbard, first stop. Second stop, Geneva. So there was so much going on in this video, I decided to make another one about Geneva. So make sure you subscribe so you get that one too. All of this is me at work. You know, you see me and you see me on D News and D News Plus and all these other places, I'm working, that's my job. And I love my job, but it can be tiring to work 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. or, you know, 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. and who knows what time zone you're in and when you get to eat next. I do it for you, and I'm doing it for you again here now. So thank you so much for watching my channel. I've got this new camera set up. Let me know what you think of that, and I hopefully get this new audio thing worked out. I had to buy a mic for this new apartment. But anyway, I love you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come say hi on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez. I read all my tweets. See ya. Look at
Nice job, Margo.